What's up YouTube fam? Welcome back to my Nahamo Nation book club. According to Google, about half of all of the best-selling books of all time have been in the fantasy genre. Second only to romance, be it epic fantasy, urban fantasy, or dark fantasy. The only other kind of book that even comes close to competing is the combination genre that I will refer to as romanticy, aka romantic fantasy. As an author who writes a combination of both fantasy and romance, I can tell you that reading specifically fantasy does some very interesting things to your mind. So here's my list of the top six things that reading fantasy does to your brain. I'll link the video that I watched for research in the description box. Number one, reading fantasy impacts the part of your brain responsible for language. Example, uh, I created a language for my book series that I can read, write, and speak as well as I do English. I call it Nahamo. When you're reading about a fantasy world that may not have the same dialect or use the same kind of words that you're used to using in your everyday life, your mind and brain are kind of forced to fill in the holes of the things they don't understand. English as a language doesn't have words to describe the feelings, thoughts, or experiences that the characters in the books go through. So in a fantasy setting, our minds kind of have to adapt to understand what's going on. And luckily, our brains are really good at that. And as the saying goes, practice makes perfect. So the more you read, the more your brain will automatically adapt to situations and experiences that maybe it's not so familiar with. Number two, reading fantasy helps you notice more details and make connections easier. Worlds with more detail make you pay more attention and spend more time trying to understand them. My series in particular has a lot of fine details that if you're not paying attention, you can miss them and then miss out on the biggest jokes or the biggest plot of the entire series. Spoiler alert for those of you unfamiliar with the story, the lead female of my series is called Melly, but so is the author. Now, most people would glance at this and think, oh, it's just an author insert, when the reality is, actually, it's a character who's playing God in her universe. She's writing the story as you're reading it, and so if you don't notice the little details that she kind of drops here and there, you totally could miss most of the main plot of the entire series without even realizing it because you weren't paying attention for the details. Another example, once again, spoiler alert, the Nahamu siblings, uh, who are some of the main characters in the books, they are spiritually immortal, which basically means they, even if they die, their consciousness transfers and gets reincarnated so they remember their past lives in their next life, which basically makes them as immortal as someone can be. They hint at it pretty often, and they don't really try to hide it, um, but if you're not paying attention, the jokes don't really make sense, because they'll make one joke here and then seven chapters later make another joke down there. Relevant to the first joke, you really have to pay attention to enjoy the fine details. But reading fantasy stories like this can improve your ability to connect dots notice the details, and really make connections to things a lot faster, which can benefit you in your everyday life. It can improve your brain's natural pattern recognition, which is good across the board, because the more you recognize patterns, the more you consciously look for patterns or subconsciously look for patterns, which can actually improve your brain health, among other things. Number three, reading fantasy impacts the part of your brain that regulates your emotions. If you enjoy the story and enjoy reading, this can actually benefit you no matter what genre you're reading. But fantasy specifically has the ability to take you away to a whole different world with a whole new set of rules and a whole new life. And if you put yourself in that kind of world while you're reading, it can seriously affect your emotional state in a very good way. You go to that world and your worries fade away, the daily stress dissipates, and you're just kind of like, whew, relaxed. It's almost like a form of meditation, which is really cool. The more you read, the more you can get access to these kind of benefits, but also just reading, enjoying a good story, you know, at the end of the day, it can, you know, lower your depression, it can lower your anxiety, it can raise your mood in general. Unless you read the first book and then you have to wait a whole year for the second book to come out, by which case I feel like that would give me a lot of anxiety. I think I need to fact check that last one. I think I need to fact check that. Number four, reading fantasy can not only improve your mood, but it can also increase your empathy as well as give you more confidence and improve your self-image. The brain doesn't know the difference between an imagined scenario and a real scenario, which is why if you're running in a dream and you wake up the next morning, your legs might feel sore because your brain doesn't really know the difference between it actually happening and you just like pretending it did in your head. 
which means that if you read a book where a character is confident and self-assured and you associate yourself with that character, those feelings can actually transfer onto yourself and you can improve your confidence and self-image via that character. You almost subconsciously take on the traits that you admire the most in other people, be they a book character or a real life person. Uh, by the way, did you know that 78% of people associate themselves either with an anti-hero or a villain compared to like the hero or any other character? No? Just me? Okay, well. Now, when it comes to reading, my favorite things to read are like legends and mythology, uh, cultures that tell stories a long time ago, you know, ancient civilizations, basically anything that I can learn to become a better storyteller or anything that gives me an idea for my own stories. Because unlike a lot of people who enjoy books, I more so enjoy writing than I do reading. My brain is so full of ideas. Literally, I have so many of them. I have hundreds of stories and I have to force myself to put them on paper so that I don't forget them. But my experience as a writer and an author has made me more confident, braver, more likely to take a risk. And honestly, it's made me really well read because I have to learn how details work. I have to figure out how a situation would accurately go down in order to write about it and put it in my own books. That being said, the genre is called fantasy. So take that as you will. But understanding how something works definitely makes you more confident about that thing. And if you are confident in one aspect of your life, it's much easier to make yourself more confident or improve your own self-image if you've already got one thing that you're sure about. But because we live in a world of instant gratification, there are two problems that I run into the most when it comes to trying to read and enjoy reading. Number one, when I was younger, the characters never felt relatable. Like I cannot think of a single character in books or media that I like related to, that I really enjoyed. That being said, I didn't really relate to these characters, but like I watched a lot of Dragon Ball Z growing up and um, those characters, yeah, they instilled some good lessons in me. Like try your hardest, always keep working, those kind of things. Growing up with that was really good. But when they don't have necessarily female characters who I could relate to, well, maybe Android 18. <laughs> that can kind of cause you to go into like a spiral of not really knowing who you are and not really knowing what your own self-identity is. Because when you're younger, especially in that like 14, 15, 16 range, you're trying to figure out who you are. You're trying to figure out what your identity is and not seeing your own representation in media, or at least not seeing things in media or in books that you can relate to. It's not very good on your self-image. So to fix that, I wrote my own books. And number two, I get bored really easily. So basically, if I'm not entertained in the first three chapters, you've lost me. Like, it, it, it's probably just because my brain is moving a million miles a minute and I can't sit still and I'm like, pew, pew, pew. I'm sure there's a word for that, but I don't know what it is. But that's why if you can make it through the first chapter of my book, you will be instantly hooked because the first chapter, by the end of it, because that's how I am, that's how I write. I am my own biggest fan. So if you are really, really wanting to find a good story that, where you can relate to characters, this is a really good one if you have a short attention span like me and need to be hooked on it really fast. Basically, if you can make it through the first chapter, you will probably love this series. It's a very fast paced moving series with a lot of action and a lot of good stuff. So check it out if you haven't seen it already. But it's my opinion that if a book is feeling really slow, you shouldn't force yourself to read it. Like, one of two things typically happens, in my opinion, with that kind of thing. Either A, you and that book are not compatible. Could be an awesome book, but maybe it's just not for you. Or number two, it's just a slow running book. And some people love that. I am not one of those people. Just a personal preference. That being said, number five, Reading fantasy can improve your attention span. Yes, I know, it's ironic. Along with accessing the part of your brain directly involved with focus, details, and language, fantasy books on average are more likely to hold your attention organically. They're full of magic and monsters and badass battle scenes, and if you're like me, I always add a certain element of romance to at least a part of my book because 
well I mean without love what is life really like I mean it might not be the main part of the story but it's certainly in there somewhere because I believe that having an element of love to every story makes it a little more realistic even in fantasy plus I just love love like come on it's just it's the only thing in this world worth actually living and dying for if we're being real be it loving your family and your children or your spouse I digress love is the best but being able to actually sit down and read a book beginning to end without fidgeting with something else like checking your phone or messing with something which <laughs> I have a problem with as I'm sure you've probably gathered at this point reading a book beginning to end and going on the whole journey not only gives you a sense of accomplishment but it improves your ability to focus on one singular thing for an extended period of time in a world where multitasking is the new norm focusing on one thing is basically the new version of meditation for a lot of people. I don't know if my books are ever going to get to the size of audience that I want them to, mostly just because I know that they could do a lot of good for humanity. But I'm not going to stop because I genuinely believe that the messages and the themes that I explore f about, you know, finding your inner self and figuring out your own identity and those varieties, exploring the dark and light side of the human b mind and all the things that go along with it. I think that could really benefit a lot of us in an age where we're all so confused about everything. And also, I know there has to be at least one person out there like me who felt like they never like found a book where they thought that they could relate to the characters. So if you are that person, I'm so glad I found you and I hope I help. I've created this entire world similar to the one that we live in and parallel to ours simply just because fantasy mirrors reality. The reason we have so many stories today about dystopian societies and apocalyptic happenings and all that variety of stuff is because as a species, I think that we're all just kind of waiting for the other shoe to drop. Like there's, we all feel like there's something fundamentally wrong that needs fixing in our world. We're all scared and confused and just trying to figure it out. And I personally believe that the best way to do that is by expanding the kinds of conversations we have with ourselves without fear of judgment. Which leads us to, in my opinion, the most important thing that you can get from reading fantasy books and kind of just reading in general. Number six, reading fantasy can help you to understand yourself better. Nobody's perfect and that's why I wrote my books originally because it was helping myself to figure out who I am and what I was doing and how to battle and, well, more so bandage the parts of myself that, you know, I hide away from the world just like everyone else does. We all hide away parts of ourselves that we don't want the world to see. Maybe because we're ashamed of it or maybe because we just don't know what to do with it. But often what happens is we go all or nothing. We're either entirely light, we shove everything dark down, or we go entirely dark side, give into every hedonistic whim, and we shove down everything good. And neither one of those is the way to go. Like, you have to have a balance of light and dark in yourself to truly be a functioning, well-adjusted human being like we all have the potential to be. It's time to heal your inner child, and it's time to face those inner demons. Everyone has them, and if you shove them down so that you don't have to think about them, eventually they're gonna bite you back in the worst possible ways. And of course, the best way to do that is by doing something fun and entertaining and maybe learning a little bit along the way. Which is why I made a video specifically with that in mind. So if you'll click over here, you'll find a video that I made when I first opened my YouTube channel, which is the book trailer for my series, The Caster Saga. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all so much. And Naidoken Nahamo. See you in the stars.